story of my life. My name is Ali Garrison and I am delighted to be here with my friend Dr. Afua Cooper, writer, poet and scholar. She is currently the James Robinson Johnston Chair in Black Canadian Studies at Dalhousie in Nova Scotia. Some of her research topics have included African diaspora, Black Canadian studies, and uh, uh, slavery and freedom um, abolition. Uh, as uh, I think you've just explored that in your dissertation, yes. doing battle in freedom's causing, Henry Bibb, abolitionism, race uplift, and black manhood, 1842 to 1854. Mm -hmm. Afua, thank you so much for talking with me about Henry Bibb. One of the great abolitionists of the mid 1800s and a former enslaved person who was a significant and overlooked giant mm -hmm. in both American and Canadian history. I have way too many questions for you mm -hmm. because Henry has become such an important uh, and symbolic figure in my own recent creative explorations. Mm -hmm. But I have tried to narrow all the questions down and we may not get to them, but we'll try. Yeah. Definitely. Um, first of all, maybe just uh, give people a little bit of information about a, a general overview of who Henry Bibb was, if you could. Right. Well, Henry Bibb was an abolitionist. He was a, a fugitive slave. He was born in Kentucky. His mother was Mildred Jackson. His father was um, James Bibb, who was a state senator. His father was a white man. His mother was a so-called mulatto lady. She was enslaved and of course even though his father was a free man, um, children followed, enslaved children followed the status of their their mothers. Meaning that because his mother was a slave and even though his father was a free man, he uh, was a slave upon birth. He had um, six brothers. His mother had seven sons and he was the eldest. And so he lived in Kentucky um, he married a, a fellow enslaved woman named Melinda. In the winter of uh, 1838, he made a bid for freedom. He escaped, he went up to Ohio, he reached Michigan, he was even coming over to Canada, but the deal he and his wife made was that he would come back. So he worked in Michigan for that winter. He came back to Kentucky to rescue his wife and um, child. They had a child then. But well, however, he was betrayed and, um, and, and, and recaptured. But to cut a long story short, he escaped about six times. Um, he kept escaping, he kept being recaptured. Uh, finally, he, his wife and, and daughter, Mary Frances, were sold down to Louisiana. And then from Louisiana, they were split up and the wife and child was sold away into Mississippi and he was sold in, into Texas and they never saw each other again. So that was a, a heartbreak for the, the Bibb family. Um, in 1842, however, he did make a final and permanent escape and made his way all the way from Texas up to Michigan. And in Michigan, he joined the anti-slavery cause, became a speaker, um, a sought-after speaker toward the, the free states, came over to Ontario, spoke in Ontario, um, and then later on wrote his narrative or his autobiography, Life and Adventures of Henry Bibb, an American Slave. He also met a, a, a free woman by the name of Mira Miles, who was a school teacher. And she was from Rhode Island. And, and, and they got married. So he and Mary Miles got married. And then the Fugitive Slave Law was passed in 1850. Uh, and that meant in the American Congress, it meant that you no know, ordinary citizens were empowered to, to snitch on people that they thought were runaway slaves. This is in the North. and. Um, and with the assistance of federal marshals could return those people. But perhaps even more important than that is that the slave owners were now fully empowered to go after their runaway slaves. Mm -hmm. And with the aid 
of federal marshals returned them to slavery. So with the Fugitive Slave Act being made law in the American Congress in 1850, Henry Bibb and his wife Mary um, came over to Sandwich, Ontario. Because um, he was in Detroit, um, they would come over to Canada on occasion, but never lived in Canada permanently. Because he was, even though he was famous, had uh, you know an autobiography, a best-selling book out there in the form of his autobiography, he was still a fugitive slave, so he could still be be captured and returned to slavery, mm -hmm. etc. So they came over to um, Sandwich, which is Windsor, Ontario, and. Um, made their home there, and also came to lead the, the fugitives, because 1850 fugitive slave law, you know, being enacted, there was a rush to the border yes. by people, um, uh, previously people who had lived in freedom for many, many years in northern states, but who were, were terrified. Yes, who were in fact <coughs> fugitives. Mm -hmm. So they came, they crossed the border, they made that final step because many people had left the south and the upper south to the northern states, built a community there, lived there. Um, so the, the terror that that law um, created, the fear, uh, caused people to come over permanently into Ontario and, and other provinces like New Brunswick and Nova Scotia and Quebec. Um, so Henry Bibb was, a, he and his wife Mary were leaders in the black community on both sides of the border. In Ontario, they started the first black newspaper in the entire country, which was called The Voice of the Fugitive. And that rolled out the press on January 1st, 1851 um, in Sandwich, Ontario. They, they built schools, they built churches, they built a, a housing um, project, the Refugee Home Society. Uh, they were in the temperance movement. They did everything in terms of community development and, and racial uplift. Wow. Um, as I, uh, just in, in terms of his history, uh, his, um, the part of his life where he was uh, beginning his abolitionist um, actions and uh, touring and lecturing and making that impact, um, uh, I w as I was researching my own family history for the play uh, In Search of Giants that I, by Dr. Von H. Washington, who's a mentor of mine, I found several references in my ancestors' accounts about Henry Bibb mm -hmm. and about his visit to their home while he was touring Michigan in the 1840s <clears throat> with his fellow abolitionist Treadwell, Treadwell yeah. um, in order to garner more public uh, support and for funding for the anti-slavery movement. Also, I believe he was uh, trying to, um, that they actually wanted to uh, get enough funds to help him buy his uh, wife and child mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. before he went down again. Um, my great, great, great grandmother, Pamela Brown Thomas, who was a hotel keeper on the Underground Railroad between 1840 and 1860, wrote this about him, and I just thought I would read it to you from her account. Um, One of the most intelligent of the escaping fugitives, Henry Bibb, came to our house with Mr. Treadwell of Jackson. My husband invited a house full of friends and neighbors to hear him tell of his life in slavery. He also sang some of Whittier's anti-slavery songs mm -hmm. with a voice and a feeling that were very affecting. It seems as if so many of the people that met Henry Bibb and heard him speak throughout uh, the North uh, were really very moved to tears and to action by his eloquence and his presence and his genius, his life experiences. What is it about this man and his story that is so important and what drew you in and made you want to dig deeper into his narrative and his significance? Well, I, I got into Henry Bibb through Mary Bibb because for my master's thesis work, I looked at black teachers in Ontario in the 19th century. And of course, Mary, Mary Bibb was a, a black teacher. 
and she, she founded three schools in Essex County. And so it, it was by e examining her work, exploring her life, um, that I started looking at her husband, Henry Bibb. And it was like, oh, wait a minute here. This guy is, is amazing. Um, he did tremendous work. Uh, but as you said earlier, he's, he's overlooked in um, the history of the abolitionist movement on, on both sides of the border in both countries. Uh, a big part of that, I think, why he was overlooked, because he, he died at a young age. Mm -hmm. He was 39 or 38 um, when, when he died. In fact, we, we know when he was born. He was born in 18, 1814. <coughs> So he 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 died in eight, 1854. So he's 39. He was 39. Yeah, so 39, 38 to 39. That's a so lot that yeah. he accomplished he, in, in 39 in, years. In those short years, that's what and, I'm thinking. And out of slavery. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it it was like, you know, it makes me think of uh, people like Martin Luther King, who was who was also young, who was also 39. Mm -hmm. Um, Malcolm X was also 39, and it's like they packed so much in, in their short lives. So that was how I got into Henry Bibb and his story. You ask why, um, you know, pe people were so moved by his story. Henry Bibb was the real deal. Pre um, previously, before Henry Bibb came on the scene, or Frederick Douglass, or William Wells Brown, um, it, it, people who would lecture on the anti-slavery cause, uh, people who were doing the lecture tours, some of them were free blacks, but they had not endured slavery. They had not experienced escaped. slavery. They had not escaped. Or